Hi everyone. Well, what a fine day. Today is January the 30th, 2024. The year has just started and I have to say I'm sitting here and I'm quite happy that after a very, very interesting day yesterday that I found some sleep because, well, Meta has released Colama 70 billion yesterday and it's open source and available to everyone. I will talk about this now and if you're interested um, please be so kind and wait until the end of this video because then I will show you how to run it, how to run Code Llama at home. Well, thinking about the whole task at hand, programming using artificial intelligence, this is something that I've been doing for quite some time now. I think I started in 2021 installing Copilot and then my life was completely different. My life as a programmer was almost upside down because I now had this coding assistant, which back then was still very, very young. And it helped me immediately, like getting my productivity and creativity up. So you can imagine that you're writing some code and then you get some autocomplete, where now is the time that this autocomplete actually makes sense. You still have to check the code is being generated. You have to correct it here and there. But at the end of the day, this is a huge increase in productivity. For me, it was a seven times increase. So back in 2021, it seems like I almost did not do any programming work at all. And in 2023, last year, it was just, just through the roof. And I'm very excited for this year to see how far I can get with my own programming, productivity and creativity. But well, I'm deviating. As I'm telling you, well, if you like to start with programming on your own computer using artificial intelligence, well, there then might be some obstacles in this on your own computer, right? Because up until recently, um, your own computers were not really fast enough. How you would start generally with coding with AI is you would subscribe to Copilot or maybe subscribe to Tab9 or to a couple of other alternatives. You would pay a monthly fee. You would integrate the models that someone else provides you with your integrated development environment like Visual Studio Code, and then you would just go wild. Works like a charm almost all the time. Um, as I'm saying it, well, <laughs> if you're traveling with Deutsche Bahn, then maybe you have some trouble because out in the wild in Germany, usually the internet connection is not good enough and it's the main requirement. So every time you would like to have some source code autocompleted with AI, it goes via internet somewhere else, gets processed, and then you get the response. So it would be a great idea to have it running on premise, right? On premise means that you're running it on your own hardware. And here comes uh, also another interesting aspect. If you run it at home, again, it's also an advantage not to send your source code all the time back and forth because there might be some security reasons. Although all those providers, um, you can you can trust all those providers sometimes you might not be really in the mood to send your sensible source code back and forth. So it's better to have it run somewhere else. So usually this would require that you spin up some machine somewhere else, preferably well, in your own apartment or in your own company, a strong AI computer. And you would connect to this computer and then you have a lot of fun programming. So something that you can do. There was something else that I have been expecting for a couple of years now is a certain convergence because we saw two things. We saw that language models, including coding models, became better and better with smaller amount of trainable parameters. Fewer trainable parameters means that, well, those checkpoints will not be that big in download and also running them would be faster. So we saw models getting smaller and faster by optimizations, better data sets and so on and so forth. And we also saw that our own, I would say almost mobile hardware got better and better and better and better. Let me give you an example, MacBook Pros. MacBook Pros, Apple recently introduced the um, silicon architecture, means you have dedicated um, hardware that can do well the usual stuff but also GPU acceleration and neural computation so they are designed to that they went through a couple of iterations couple of generations and now actually you have hardware that you can run your language models on and this is what I've been working with, with for the last couple of weeks so I recently bought a new MacBook Pro 
M3 Max. So it's one of the more expensive ones, but for me it's fine. It's tax, tax deductible because it's working equipment, right? And um, I realized that, well, installing language models on that machine, not a problem at all, except for, well, download takes some time. You can spin up those models. You can use those models in your workflows, so both coding models and also general natural language processing models. And it gives you a real advantage. Um, for me, life is now completely different because the door to running language models, large language models, coding models locally on my hardware is now wide open. So can 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 do this everywhere. It gets me really excited. So the only requirement is that now I have a lot of enough electricity because, well, truth be told, those computers tend to to get really really hot, and uh, well, <laughs> it drains the battery almost immediately. Well, not immediately. It takes a couple of hours, but it's something that you have to take into account when you're traveling for hours and hours on end. Awesome. I mean, it's just just amazing. What a time to be alive. Yesterday, I did this experiment. Yesterday was completely changed in history. It was for me like an uh, like almost a singularity event where first and foremost, uh, Meta published the 70 billion trainable parameter model of Code Llama, which is just amazing if you if you get something like this. Next, Olama, which is a company that I really like with a product that I really, really love. They it took it took a, a moment, and now the model and, and and the model was available in their own tooling system. So you can you can just download it with one line of code that you put in your command line. Um, it took me one hour to download the thirty eight gigabytes checkpoint of a four bit quantized version of of code Llama seventy B. Like really one hour of waiting time, which is quite quite okay, something that you can afford. And then I asked it to run or implement the game snake, you know, where you have to snake and has to eat something and it grows longer and longer the more it eats. It took some time to generate, I can't remember, maybe maybe 10 minutes or something to write the entire um, game and then it worked. Um, which for me was like really, really amazing. I have to stress this on my amazing this is because, well, you get some game generated on your local hardware and worked immediately. Disclaimer, I still have to do some testing. I mean, it was just the first impression and we're talking about statistics, statistical models, which means that you have to get a feeling how good those models perform on different tasks, not only one task. What if, well, I just hit the right prompt and it generated something really, really awesome. But if I would change something slightly, the result would not have been that good. Just a moment ago, we saw Code Llama 70B on the Hugging Face Big Code leaderboard and it's ranking really, really high. So the claim was that the model they've just released is as good as the first version of GPT-4 in programming. And well, we all remember GPT-4 was excellent in programming. So again, something to get really, really excited about. Still now, the open source community has to work with the model. Also, you are all invited. Please give it a try and download Code Llama 70B and check out how it works. See how well it integrates with your own workflows. And of course, share with the community. If you don't mind, you can comment on this video. So what a time to be alive. And I hope that, well, um, you will accept the idea that now we are in a phase where we do not rely all the time on some APIs that someone else is providing for our increase of productivity and creativity with artificial intelligence. No, now we are entering the time where you would run those models at home. And it's just awesome. Well, thank you very much for staying with me. I still owe you an explanation about, well, how to install those models. First and foremost, you need a kind of, let's call it substrate. You need something to run your models on. I personally work with MacBook Pros all the time, amazing hardware. But well, of course, it's not necessary to get a Mac. It's just the one that I use all of the time. You should get a computer with a decent GPU. So maybe a strong gaming PC. Disclaimer is that for this model, you need, I think, 38 gigabytes of RAMs, which, well, narrows it down significantly. 
For Macs, not a problem, they come in that sizes. With gaming computers, maybe you will not get a GPU that is strong enough. The next step would be to install some host software for CodeLama. I use Olama almost all of the time. You can navigate to their homepage. You can download an installer for Mac. There's also a manual how to install it on Unix. Both I've tried, both work like a charm. They tell that you can also run it on Windows, which I usually advise against. Once you have Olama installed, you just navigate to your favorite terminal and then you type Olama run code llama colon 70b, press play on tape and then you have to wait for maybe a moment, maybe an hour. It will download the model and run it for you. Here you can see the model generating. This is sped up. So it is not the original speed of a MacBook Pro. Usually it's slower. It will take a while to generate. While it's generating, I can also tell you that quite a lot of integrations exist for Olama. So you can, for example, run it into the continue extension, which allows you to run Olama in Visual Studio Code. And maybe this is something that I'd like to do next. And now, thank you very much. Thanks for watching my video. Please be so kind and subscribe and like this video.